Right, Chinese residents are clashing with riot police. This happened last night. Look at these pictures. Chinese authorities reportedly tracking people down who gathered at the protests over the weekend. They will come and find you. We've also learned that Apple limited its airdrop sharing feature in China, which has been an important tool in protesters' efforts to avoid censorship over recent years. We told you about that story yesterday. Joining me right now is former senior advisor to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. She is Stevens Inc. Executive Vice President and Senior Policy Advisor Mary Kissel back with us. Mary, good to see you. Thanks so much for being here this it's morning. It's great to be with you, Maria. So Good morning. I was just reading your eye on the world, and uh, you talk a lot about the importance of what we're seeing here on the ground. How do you assess these protesters? How significant do you think this has been? Well, it's very significant, Maria, for several reasons. First of all, um, there are protests all the time in China, but they're, they're usually over local issues. The difference here is that many of these protesters are upset over the national policy of a lockdown, um, a lockdown which, by the way, has no scientific basis, that the regime has lied to the protesters about it repeatedly. It's very arbitrary. And it's cost many, many, many lives. Needlessly, it's a great tragedy. Um, so there's a unifying theme here, and that's why you're seeing protests break out across the country, um, from the south in Hong Kong to the northern capital of Beijing to the west in Xinjiang. And it's also personally very threatening to the general secretary, because he's associated with the policy. And so, um, as you know, the, the party's main goal is to, is to stay in power. Um, and they will employ any tactic necessary to put these protests down, whether or not it's the brutality in that clip that you just showed, or if it's more the sort of quiet terror um, of the surveillance state and the tech state. Well, I mean, it's pretty incredible to see what they're up against now. And Xi Jinping just was empowered a couple of weeks ago, right, a at the uh, People's Congress. So is there any reason to believe that the protesters will actually move the needle on you know, on, on, on getting Xi Jinping to step down at, at this point after all of the empowerment and he's now the leader for dictator for life like Mao Zedong? Well, we don't know. Um, I can tell you what we do know, which is that the United States has been pretty terrible at predicting when we will have national uprisings. We missed the fall of Soviet Union. We missed the Arab Spring. Uh, we didn't see the protests in Cuba or the renewed protests in Iran. Um, this is a very opaque totalitarian regime. We know that Xi Jinping has really upset many, many people in positions of power, from his political rivals like Bo Lai to the heads of the military that he took out, to the corporate chieftains. I mean, Jack Ma is apparently, according to the Financial Times, sitting in Tokyo because he's probably too afraid to come back to China. So there's likely some opposition here. And I think it's, it's an important point, Maria, because uh, in order for these protests, I think, to be ultimately successful, you would need buy-in from some portion of the leadership. So that's something that I'm telling clients um, to look for. Um, but regardless, no matter which way this goes, if it's a horrible, brutal crackdown or if it is successful, I mean, you're looking at an enormous volatility here. And another reminder um, that this communist regime is not all-seeing and all-knowing. In fact, uh, they're terrible, incompetent leaders. Um, they have plunged the property market into great distress. You've got huge youth unemployment. In fact, many of the same conditions that led to the Tiananmen protests across the country in 1989. Yeah, it's a great point. And we're seeing real evidence of a slowdown um, in, in the economy there. And uh, certainly that's going to have an impact on the world. But I want to get your take on corporate America potentially funding the expansion of communist China. We know the CCP's ultimate goal is to overtake the United States as the number one superpower. So why is uh, Apple, for example, implementing a 10-minute time limit for Chinese users of AirDrop? Why are, is corporate America, you know, pushing uh, investors to buy into Chinese companies that may very well at some point turn around and, and turn their ire on America? There's a newly published Pentagon report that finds China is on pace to challenge the U.S. militarily and could prevent it from intervening in a potential invasion on Taiwan, Beijing, Beijing tripling its nuclear stockpile to 1,500 warheads by 2035, Mary. Is corporate America not paying attention? Well, I can't speak for Apple, um, but what I can say is that for 40 years, Republicans and Democrats encouraged corporate America to invest in China, whether that was you know, Wall Street or, or Hollywood. 
um, or our tech industry. And unfortunately, Maria, you know just as well as I do that there's no patriotism in C-suites anymore um, in, in the Fortune 500. I mean, at Stevens, we're a, we're a private company. We're different from Wall Street. Um, but, you know, you talk a lot about Tim Cook on the program, and I, I think that's right. Why would he put that a policy in place in China to empower a totalitarian regime, which is committing genocide? Um, but I think we should also look at the board of directors of Apple. I mean, where's the governance here? I mean, go and look at the board. Who's on the board? Alex Gorsky of J&J. &J. You've got Al Gore on that board. You've got a, a BlackRock director on that board. These are all people who have significant interests in China. And that's, again, why this threat is so insidious, because over these decades, and you saw Jiang Zemin you know, just passed away this morning, uh, there was a very concerted effort on behalf of the Communist Party to buy our loyalty. And this was a, a pattern over years and decades. Um, these guys weren't reformers. Uh, they were using this opening up to the world for their own interests, yeah. for their personal interests. And so, you know, you need leadership. You need leadership in the White House and the administration. You need people in corporate America to stand up. You need uh, proxy voting firms. I think this is a key that no one ever talks about. Um, if, if you are uh, looking to, to vote, uh, ISS is directing the vote of uh, many, many companies. I mean, you're not, you're not seeing people do their own diligence. They're letting mm. ISS do it for them. So, yeah. you know, like, where's the governance of the boards? Yeah. Uh, real quick, Mary, any thoughts on the trial of Jimmy Lai? A great op-ed by uh, Paul Gigo talking about Jimmy Lai's uh, journey. Um, friends of, uh, uh, of Jack Keane, and now he's probably going to spend the rest of his life in prison. You're, what, how do you think that yeah, plays Jimmy out? Jimmy Lai is a personal friend of mine. I should disclose that. Um, I think Jimmy is right when he said that the Hong Kongers are fighting our Cold War behind enemy lines. That's why we should care about not just what's happening to Jimmy Lai, which is a great tragedy. He's a great man. But what has happened to all of the Hong Kongers? Yep. Um, they have been assimilated into a system that the leadership in Beijing wants to expand and that we know the Chinese people do not want. They're not just upset about COVID. They're upset at the lack of democracy. They're upset at their terrible economy. Right. They're upset at the corruption. They're upset at being lied to. We need to stop talking about just the leadership and we need to start talking about the Chinese people. They've been protesting periodically for four decades. The Democracy Wall Movement, Tiananmen, the Charter 08 Movement, the Hong Kong protests, thousands of other protests that we never hear about. We need to, we need to talk about them. And if you care about investing in China, then you want a free China. Yep. Mary, good to see you. Thanks very much. Mary Kissinger.